Welcome back. You're watching Finweek Money Matters. Now, whether your business has a simple website to supply information to your customers or a sophisticated online shopping platform with integrated social media campaigns, a digital presence is becoming an indispensable business tool. Now, digital business strategy is a great way to ensure that you get a return on your digital investment. So today we're talking about digital market, talking to a digital marketing experts about why digital strategy is important and offering some tips on where to begin. Antonio Pe Head of Strategy and Insight at Native VML and Mike Stopforth, CEO of Cerebra, are joining us for more on this. Thanks for joining us. Mike, let's kick off with you. I mean, talk to us about what a digital strategy is, essentially. So I guess the danger with a phrase like digital strategy is that both digital and strategy have very broad definitions, depending on who you speak to. Um, for us, a digital strategy is a plan uh, that enables you to reach business objectives by using specific digital channels to engage with constituents. And those might be partners or stakeholders or um, customers or potential customers or even your employees. Um, but we find that many of our clients uh, and many small businesses feel obliged to engage digitally without necessarily thinking about the business objective first. And so that would be that would be numero uno, is, is evaluate whether or not this has business value and then unpack how you'll measure that so, in turn. And a lot of people automatically equate digital with social media, which is incorrect. Am I right? Because there's, there's many facets to digital. It doesn't mm. only involve Facebooking and Twitter, et cetera, et cetera. Sure. I, I, again, a very broad, uh, a very broad term. Um, for us, digital, um, equates almost specifically uh, from a communications perspective to those channels that are um, non-traditional and again it's very broad because I guess if a digital billboard uh, mm -hmm. uh, can be confused with outdoor then, then mm -hmm. we could have a debate around that um, but I, I you know for most of our smaller clients it, it would be around my website do I have a Facebook or Twitter page do I invest in uh, paid search those are the key mm -hmm. elements that they would consider I think so and so we shouldn't be thinking about taking that in a step forward in the world where everyone is moving online more and more. Of course, we're waiting for faster data speeds here, uh, but that will eventually come. I mean, shouldn't companies start thinking about how they will sell their services, products online in the future where the world is online? Yeah, I mean, of course. I mean, Mark's totally right. I don't think it's actually got anything to do with speed. It's about it's actually about considering consumer touch points and the interplay of those touch points. That's where digital strategy is actually more complicated than the kind of traditional business strategy is that you really have to understand the consumer and for businesses it's you know they when, when they look at digital strategy they kind of get confused and they go okay I have to move my whole business online and it's actually not really about that you can do that but maybe there's an area of your business that will either con you know the rule is it has to contribute to your bottom line so you either do that by selling stuff online or you reduce costs by putting a process online, or you just crush up a process that's difficult for the consumer, put that on, online and build some brand affinity. But at the end of the day, it's actually, you have to be quite focused about that. So then how do you, how would you start if I had a small business? How would I identify the, the right digital uh, initiatives for my business? I, I, I'm actually glad about this platform because it's something I tell everybody who's, who's a small entrepreneur, it's like I evangelize this, but <clears throat> it's actually you start with a SWOT analysis. You start by critically analyzing your business idea, and and you can do that with like a you can do that with a SWOT analysis, so a technical way of doing it. But the other thing you can do, you can just go and ask people if they would take up the product. It saves you a heck of a lot of time and money. I mean, you can agree with that. Entrepreneurs, yeah, a lot of them. There's also different kinds of entrepreneurs. There's entrepreneurs that have a natural uh, digital uh, competency or feel that, that it's a platform that they're very personally comfortable on. In, in some ways, they mm -hmm. will. Uh, personally drive that, especially at the early stages of your business where you're bootstrapping, you can set up your own site or you know go run your own Facebook page or whatever. There's others that find it very difficult and it's not a, tr uh, not a natural platform or a natural engagement for them. So we, we tend to have this very simple matrix that says there are certain businesses or products that gravitate naturally towards that environment, certain businesses and products that don't. Can you give us an example? Work, work with examples. A business or product that would naturally gravitate towards that kind of, kind of environment is maybe um, uh, designer furniture. It's very easy to uh, sell online, to share online. It's something that is attractive that people would be interested in. Um, and and you know, I, I would feel inclined as a business owner of that kind of business uh, that that would be a very natural place for me to, to, to sell and engage. So what do you find are some of the common mistakes that businesses make when they just want to do digital and they go online and they do Facebooking? What do you see them constantly doing wrong over and over again? Um, <coughs> what they do primarily, and we hear there's a methodology to counteract this, is they treat their initial investment 
as the pile of cash that they have to get themselves online and they have a very strict timeline to do that. So they will just burn up that money until they get to the end and if they haven't made their objective by that stage, then you know it's game over and they get upset. Mm -hmm. um, there's a methodology called the Lean Startup which is adopted by the Harvard Business School now mm -hmm. which is really you come up with a premise and you test it iteratively and that's what we're trying to do as well. But I think that's the best thing. How do you know that your digital strategy is working? So you, you're selling stuff for yeah. a start. People are talking about you <laughs> but what if you don't have uh, for a start. You're not worried about the money you're spending on it. For another, you were mm. talking about mistakes though that a lot of small businesses make. And I think one of the first one is that um, we assume that because there are a lot of people that could potentially build a website or offer that kind of service, that it's something that you can spend yeah. a minimal amount of money on. And I see a lot of guys running their own small businesses that will spend an amount of money on a website it fails or it doesn't reach their expectations. Uh, and they then spend a little bit more and mm -hmm. then it, and they land up spending, I guess, a hell of a lot more in the long run than they would have at the beginning. So I would yeah. encourage guys that are serious about their digital business presence, that mm -hmm. they would invest as much time and energy as they would in maybe their bricks and mortar mm -hmm. real estate, because it is just a, you know, a, a, an online virtual pixelated version of your business. Uh, I, I rather invest the money up front, know that you're working with the right kinds of mm -hmm. partners, you understand business and understand commerce and get a better solution long term. Let's, let's get to that point you made about has to contribute to your bottom line. Because essentially, you know, if you're spending money, there has to be a yeah, reason absolutely. for that. There has to be a return on that investment. So, so give us some examples of some of the initiatives that you have in digital strategy, sometimes where people have had to walk away from something, even though it is a yielding some results, but it's not adding up to the overall investment. Yeah. Uh, and of course, building your return. We do it all the time. I mean, it's actually when you were saying, how do you track it? You track it by finding a metric, something in your business that you can measure that, that actually ties directly to the bottom line. So but like how in, do you know exactly which metric? Like in the auto be? industry, it would be test drives online because you can't sell cars online but you can get someone to go to a test drive and if they do a test drive they're more likely to buy the vehicle you know so there's a mm -hmm. there's actually we can measure the success of a website by the amount of test drives booked and that's where we'll walk away from campaigns you know we'll walk away from projects when we, we won't like person will say to the client listen it's not working we have to change our tactic that's the important mm -hmm. thing I use the word work, walk away, which is the wrong way to look at it. Actually, what you need to do is change tactics yeah, exactly. because digital is like it's a, the technology landscape constantly shifts, the way people behave constantly shifts. So you've got to be measuring really, really well and then also understanding when things go wrong, have a plan B, plan C, you know, how do we test this? Yeah. And, uh, go ahead, Mike. Yeah, Antonio makes a valid point around measurement because I think there's also a, an inherent assumption that the digital landscape provides automatic solutions. So, so let me give you a practical example. If I put my corporate video on YouTube, it'll go viral. Uh, we're forgetting that it's not really YouTube uh, that determines whether or not something goes viral. It will be the quality of that content and whether or not you invest the time and energy in making it even remotely so, interesting. So on so that point, how much time do you have to spend educating clients and managing the expectations? Is that a big part of what you do? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Look, personally, I, I think, and I speak for Antonio, a, a lot of our clients are, are corporations that have a, a far more complexity and aren't able to execute themselves because perhaps they don't have the resources uh, or time or energy to do that. They're busy in the business of, of, of whatever operation it is. But for, you know, again, for a small business, for an entrepreneur, uh, assuming that the guy is somebody that has a natural aptitude for, for this environment, I would suggest a hell of a lot of time. But again, it's got to be it's got to be something that you're able to track back, both in terms of uh, opportunity cost and, and, and the effort and the intellect that you spend uh, on it back to some sort of business mm. value. How do you get the people who work for you to buy into your strategy? Because now you have to roll it out. We've now consulted with you guys. We know where we want to go. How do I get other people to buy into the strategy of mine? Well, it's actually pretty easy when you do your strategy right. Because I mean, the strategy, like I said in the beginning, the strategy is a really basic formula. It's where we are right now, where we want to be, and the plan to get there, the action steps. And if you do that process right, you will involve everybody. Mm. You don't do it alone. Everybody's bought into it. You workshop it. And, and that final action list that you have is, is actually, it's a group effort. You can't do it alone. You need to, yeah. What, what, do, you, sorry. what do you see as some of the, the trends right now defining how people interact online that need to be thought about when you're thinking about a digital strategy? So looking at, at it from consumer behavior, essentially. So we see, we see customers um, with shorter and shorter attention spans. And because they have shorter attention spans, we have to be more interesting as businesses. So I think one of the first questions we have to ask as any business is, what value do I have to offer to this online conversation, uh, this propensity for people to share information with each other and endorse my business? Because 
we'd love to have happy customers everywhere spreading word of mouth about our amazing offering or service or product, mm. but you have to give them a reason. So, so with minimal attention spans, you have to be all the more compelling. So it's a storytelling trend for business. It's, a, it's about refining the brand into a compelling story. But then also, I think one of the biggest trends is, is the technology is getting better, and as the technology gets better, so the customer is getting smarter. But that's advantageous for us too, because we're also able to measure far more efficiently than ever before. No, I would agree. It's all about feeding the content monster. And surely basically. mobile has to be an element that you guys yeah, are dealing with as well. That was the second trend. I mean, that's basically, it's, it's, it's internet anywhere, you know, anytime. Mm -hmm. People want it. There's different trends in South Africa because we have different, you know, there's, there's obviously different social and economic groups. There. So tell us about some of those. Well, I mean, at the low end of the spectrum, you've got people, there's very surprising groups. I mean, like people earning below 3,000 Rand a month actually have more disposable income than people between 4 and 10 grand a month because they don't pay for the social services and stuff like that. So they spend like 8% of their income on clothing, which is really interesting at that level. You wouldn't think about it. And they're starting to use mobile more, a lot more. And what's really cool is that, okay, right now the handset usage and stuff is quite basic and it's very limited by the amount they can afford, but that is changing. Within the next 24 months, the smartphones we have in our pockets will hit the second-hand mm -hmm. market. The price of bandwidth, bandwidth is dropping every day, so they're going to become more sophisticated. They're going to want more content, they're going to want more services. I mean, the big thing that we can't crack with those guys, we can give them virtual services, but physical services, like actual physical delivery of product to them is incredibly difficult. Because of the areas? Yeah, I mean, and it's, it's, um, logistics. It's logistics. It's I think there's also logistics. Uh, a change in thinking around mobile and desktop yeah. as being these divergent uh, sort of platforms with with the with the convergence of. of incredible devices that sort of offer us a screen in every size, all the way from a little screen up to, and, and less and less feature phones and more smartphones in the market. It's, it's more just about digital content that suits every type of interface. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so, so I think it's becoming a lot more adaptable from that perspective. We're thinking less about a Mobi site and a website, as an example, that would be the simplest mm -hmm. manifestation of that, and more about how do I make this one platform, this one digital representation of my business adaptable across all of those environments. Well, we